guys, I, I, you know, I had no idea what I was walking into tonight, and I see all kinds of personalities and big deal people, and and uh, I, know, I know it's not for me, so I feel much better now. I, the, the pressure was really high and intense, and uh, I want to talk about winning in a purple district, and, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I used to look up to John Morlock, and he was kind of the old... <laughs> He was kind of the elder statesman. And, and, and all, all you had to do was look around and every, every and Kermit, Kermit was the granddad for everybody. We loved him. Oh, hi Kermit, you're looking good in that beard. And the, the whole point is that it was Orange County. It was the fountain of the universe. It was the heart of Reaganland. Ronald Reagan had his last rally with a million people at Miles Square Park. That was 1984. That was beautiful. But you know what? Things have changed. So now we have to figure out why did we lose every single congressional seat in Orange County in 2018? What the heck was going on? And that kind of surprised a lot of things. So we had to claw and fight and get our way back. And so, yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll be very honest about what my agenda is. Number one, what's the most important election in 2024? We all know what it is. What is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, CD45. Thank you for recognizing that. <laughs> Northwest Orange County. Nobody wants to remember Northwest Orange County. Even in the good days, there are parts of it that were under Democrat control. Now it's under 100% Republican control. And we got a lot of folks from the 45th. Let's stand up. See where you are, folks. Just stand. John, Pete, Bonnie, stand up. It can't be just two people. It is two people. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So we have a PowerPoint demonstration. We want to get serious about this. We want to look good on TV. Is this my good son? No, just kidding. I have nothing to do with this. All right, so I do. Ooh. So here's a war on children. This has been going against our kids. Because that's my second ambition. The schools in California. I'm going to give you three numbers. One, there's 1,000 school districts in California. Under the, under the California Constitution, they all have to be electable. That means every four years they stagger them. So there's 1,000 school districts, basically five trustees to seven trustees per district. And so that's 2,500 elections every two years. That's amazing. And then the third statistic is John Morlock and everybody else in this room lives in three school districts, no exceptions. You're not living in two, you're living in three or maybe more. La Palma, you get to live in two, uh, four of them right now. You got an elementary school district, United School includes high school, a community college, and then the County Board of Education. So it's a lot of opportunities for grassroots smart people, and everybody in this room is more than qualified to, to, to run for city, uh, run, for the, uh, run for the school board. And that means if you don't choose to run or if you're already on a position, you can help recruit. And, and help find candidates for this. Because that's what we have here. I, I have to go up here. Can I just take this with me? Oh. This is a nice little uh, work that uh, by a libertarian friend of mine. Don't they look like little Nazis? <laughs> because they are little Nazis, that's why. So I calmly say to you, you can't read this except for the front row, your child belongs to us already. What are you? You will pass on your descendants, however, will stand in a new camp in a short time they will so they will know nothing else but the new community. That was, a, that was a speech November 6, 1933 by Adolf Hitler. Totalitarians have always been after the children in schools. It goes back to the Ottoman Empire, the Roman Empire, ancient, ancient history. You always want to grab the next generation, kill everybody but keep the kids, and then, then educate them. We're seeing that right now in, in the Middle East. So this is an ongoing struggle that we never get away from, and it particularly suits the needs of a totalitarian. Thank you, Jeff. That makes sure that they control they control the future by controlling the, by controlling the kids. That's something we've seen time and time again, and we live in California. And in the totalitarian left that Janet has to deal with on a daily basis, and in 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 Sacramento is unrelenting. When you have a supermajority. Their biggest problem is, what else can we do to screw people? You know, that's what they're constantly conspiring. They, I remember the election code used to be that thin when I was doing election fraud back, back in the 90s, and now it's this big, and they keep changing the laws and the regulations. So that's our, that's our challenge. So what do we do about it? Well, I'm pr pretty much a, a pragmatist. Chino Unified has a battle with the state of California. They decided it'd be a good idea for parents to know what's going on with their kids. 
And they passed a rule on that. And it's an important rule. And, they, and, they, and then the Attorney General Bonta, who's just a cipher, parasite of a human being in California, he's decided that he's uh, going to sue the school district because he wants to keep the parents separated from their children. This is purely totalitarian. We'll see where that case goes, but it's something that is, is foreboding because every, if we're going to start flipping school districts and making them parent-oriented and the state comes in and sues them each and every time, that kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to get done. But at the same time, we're accelerating our efforts to try to get school board districts on our side, and this is something that's terribly helpful. This is one of my favorites. In Fresno, California, pretty conservative community. Not. No, generally, areas around Fresno are really good, but the school, the, the, the union up there is just unbelievable. They decided in contract negotiations in the Fresno Unified School District, which is run and controlled by liberals, that to, to, to aid and solve the homeless problem, they suggest using high school parking lots to house the, ho to house the homeless. Isn't that great? So yeah, send your kid to school, but you might have a small problem there, and the problem is that you'll have a homeless community there. Oh, they also want the school district to pay for security protection. I, I, I don't know what the connection is. Why would they want security if you have a homeless camp at the high school? But this is a serious uh, issue that's come up recently in, in Fresno in the last seven days, and these people are serious. They're seriously out of their minds. And, 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 they, and, and, and here's the great contradiction. We, we hear, oh, don't attack the teachers. Oh, I don't attack teachers. I, I got a secondary stand in myself. But what we have to look at is it's the union of thugs that run these teachers. And any teacher, and, you know, many of them are patriotic and, and, and believe in America, but any teacher that dissents is immediately scrubbed out, vilified, isolated, and attacked. Uh, and and that's, that's just how it is. Talk to any teacher that's on our side, and there's plenty. That, you know, they have to be very much on the ground or they're going to be targeted by, by the union thugs. So this is what's going on in, in Fresno. But what, what's the concept of a teacher's union in the first place? Why are they even allowed under the law to even put money in a school board candidacy? That's the greatest conflict in the world. You have a teacher's union that elects the people that cut their paycheck. Isn't that a great deal? So you go ahead and, you know, small school district that has billions of dollars, they put up twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to elect a stooge. They get, they get a majority of the people on the school board that they paid for, and then they negotiate with them in a couple of months on a, on a nice bonus, on a nice raise, on, on more benefits for themselves. It's the most corrupt election system we have in California. It should be against the law for the teachers union to put any money on the school districts that they have an interest in. But that's, that's what we have in, in, in California. That's what we have all over the country. And the weirdest thing, and I want to make it clear, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of conservatives are getting wrapped up about, you know, the gay thing this, the gay thing that. It's not about sex. That's just part of the left-wing agenda. But the sexualizing kindergarten school kids is mind-boggling. And what they're doing, the week of action in LA Unified, just in the last seven days, they're going to teach kindergarten kids how to identify their gender. You know, I got some grandkids, and they don't give a damn about gender or identifying that. They're not worried about race or gender or sexuality or mental health. They're worried about, you know, where they're going to get their ice cream from a granddad, and that is actually a very primary concern. They, they, the, the key is that, you know, there's something weird and strange about the left where they've gone so far that nothing stops them, nothing at all. There's no shame, no embarrassment, and they're putting it right out there, and we're looking right at this in our faces. And, what, and the funny thing is that parents are noticing this. They kept, they kept it hidden for so many years, I mean literally for decades. Started with Tom Dewey, before that Horan Spann. There's always been this totalitarian impulse in public schools, particularly, the wanting to control the students and make them better people and more sensitive and you know more enlightened. And that's that's a very dangerous philosophy. 
there's something really inherently sick about the public schools that we have to deal with and change and, and, and open up and get the parents involved in. The parents have systematically been, especially in LA Unified, they don't want the parents involved. They don't want the parents to know. They don't want the parents to even understand or appreciate what's going on, but COVID changed it. We saw what was going on and everybody could see the instruction and the weird stuff and then they also see the stats. If you want a guaranteed failure mechanism, LA Unified is the most unsuccessful school district, major school district in America. They have, all they do is produce bad outcomes and if you're a poor kid in LA Unified, if you don't get beat up in school by a gang member, you'll get beat up because you won't even have good academic out outcomes. And of course they have a huge failure rate and a dropout rate and they still want more money. It's, it's, it's a real disgrace. Well, in any event, I, I argue that public schools are also dangerous, besides the gangland and the discipline problem. And you can't put a kid that's a troublemaker, that's causing trouble, that's hurting other kids, you can't even take them out of school anymore. So you just let them stay in the school and terrorize other kids. Well, Moreno Valley is no, uh, is no stranger. It's a major molestation case against a teacher. We read about this all the time. And the jury in Moreno Valley, Riverside, just last week hit the Moreno School District with a $135 million verdict for these two, two, these two guys that were traumatized when they were students because the school district knew about it, they didn't do anything about it, they were getting plenty of notice about it, and the jury didn't like it. You're going to see a lot more of these coming down. And uh, I'd, I'd be very surprised if Moreno Valley School District could afford to pay for that. So they might have to consider maybe some chartering opportunities, uh, some downsizing opportunities, but basically these are, these are just bad environments all, all too often. So the real key is that I don't want to get wrapped up in just one narrow area. This is the leftist ideology that started with critical race theory, dividing kids by their races, getting them to hate each other, talk about racial identification. It's very vicious and it, it's by literally, it's a definition of racism and then die. You may call it DEI, I choose to call it disinformation, indoctrination, and exclusion. We got to change the vocabulary like the Democrats have changed the vocabulary on us. And any, any organization, and most school districts have adopted this die. They want to have diversity, they want to have uh, ongoing uh, discussions about why, why, why one race of people are bad and why another race of people are oppressed. This is extremely destructive and it has nothing to do with education and then they're hiring minders to make sure that this is, this is enforced. Or my favorite is the 1619 Project. America is built on racism, has always been racist and it's one of the worst countries in the world. And by the way, it's written by a journalist, not even a historian, it's a complete set of lies. It's, complete, it, it's a complete distortion of what happened. But this is mainstream teaching in most schools in America, in Iowa, New England, New York City. It's, it, and it just, it's been around for a dozen years right now and there's hardly any opposition to that. It's our schools, our local schools that can make a big difference in this. This is, this is the stuff that's robbing our, our future generations from even thinking positive about being Americans. Well, that's part of the problem. Joe Rogan. He uh, signed a deal for $100 million and moved to Texas. Remember that? That was a pretty good deal. But he's the one that talks about his own kids were indoctrinated in California. And uh, it wasn't enough to be non-racist. You had to be an active anti-racist, whatever that means. You know, you had to be not only just, you know, nice and tolerant, but you had to be militant and angry at somebody and find somebody to be angry against. So we get, we get the background. So it comes down to Orange County. That's why I'm here tonight. I didn't realize how many school districts there are in Orange County. Sort of had an idea. Uh, but in Orange County, this is the action. And I've, I've had the chance to go to many uh, central committees up and down the state, and there's so many good opportunities, but particularly here in Orange County. I'm here to tell you, most of the school districts are not in good shape in Orange County, right here. In, you know, we may have uh, some, some elected officials, but we've got some really bad school districts that are really under the surface, under the horizon, people aren't paying attention to it until Orange Unified finally woke up, and we got a tremendous result on that one. Thank you. So, Maddie uh, Minor, Madison uh, Minor, uh, was elected with 31,033 votes. 
Her opponent, the union person, 30,812. She won out of 61,800 votes. She won by 221 votes and flipped the district, Orange County Unified. That's a huge deal. And you can see Orange Unified. That's that big chunk of territory, which conveniently is orange. Um, and, it, and right now, the teachers union has committed hundreds of thousands of dollars to flip the one district. Now, there's good districts, too, that have also flipped. Uh, Temecula, Marietta, uh, you're looking at uh, Chino, many school districts up north. Uh, but they picked on Orange Unified because that is the jewel. And I've asked uh, Rick Lensma, Rick, are you in the audience someplace to show up here? Because he can tell you everything. Stand up for a second. Let's give him an applause here. And Madison, where are you? There she is. So, of course, you know, the union didn't like that. And, you know, was it anything radical? You know, Rick's not exactly, a, you know, a, just a born-again radical that showed up one night and got really angry. He's been on the school board for 20 years, so he understands the nature of the beast. He's lived in the belly for 20 years, and he's seen what the superintendent has done, the assistant superintendent has done, the kind of woke agenda they've infused in the school. And it's really, Fred tells me, who's been a resident all of his life there, most of his life, or a good part of his life, or he lives there now. <laughs> he tells me most people aren't communist in orange, so I believe that. And, and yet, it's, it's an area where the unions can't afford to let Rick and uh, Madison uh, run the day, run the school board. And so they have put in a tremendous amount of money, and they got signatures just like that f to force a recall, and now the onus is on us. This is, these are our heroes. This is a recall. We can win in recalls. And if the election is on, uh, is on the primary day, where a lot of Republicans are going to show up and vote, we're going to win. If it's a special election, we're going to win. But only if we want to work for it and make it happen. I guarantee you, Michelle's troops from northwest Orange County are going to come over and spend a couple of Saturdays knocking on doors, because that's what we have to do if we're going to keep our county sane and a good place and a high quality of living. To, to do that. So there's your 28 districts in Orange County. There's 140 positions out of that, and there's 70 elections up in 2024. Now, is everybody sitting on a school board a great pro-American like Rick and the Madison? No. Some of them are bad, snaky, terrible people that shouldn't even be there. It's our job to sort them out, to see who's on these school districts. Is Lowell Joint in great shape? Ocean View, I mean, we, you, you know the areas, and we know who they are, uh, and so let's start doing our, 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 our studying. Good news in Fountain Valley, that's one district that I really do like, because we've got a good majority there, but there's, most of these need new candidates to take out the old incumbent. So I'm asking us to look at this thing collectively, look at this, you're from the, all parts of Orange County, you probably know school board members, you probably know who the bad ones are, who the good ones are. So let's start developing that list and having a good slate of high quality candidates take on the bad incumbents. And we got until August 15th. That's a lot of time to plan and organize. It doesn't have to be a last minute drill. And there's more, Orange County Board of Education. Isn't that the finest board of education in America? Six years ago, there was one pro-American on it, and the other four were not very friendly. And it took years of work. Mark Booker, the Orange County Party, everybody, uh, many people in this room, one after another, Mary Barkey, the great miracle, arose from the ashes and helped bring in good candidates. And now it's a 5-0 and o school district that's the most friendly for charter schools probably in all of America. So that's something that's good. And they were all elected with help from here. Not so good. You should be embarrassed. We got four community college districts, millions. Actually, all together, John Morlock could tell us, but probably a billion dollars in income and expenses every year with the four community college districts controlled by the left. That little green district there, I think, or maybe the orange. Which one is Jerry Patterson? Green. 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 Jerry Patterson 
Well, I was a kid. I came down here in 1984. I helped Bob Dornan. I thought he was going to be the great miracle, and he was kind of a great miracle. And Bob B1, Bob got elected, and he beat Jerry Patterson. And Jerry showed up in the polls, and he couldn't believe there were 50,000 pissed off Vietnamese standing in line six in the morning to vote against him in 1984, and Bob Dornan was elected. I fell in love with the Vietnamese at that moment. And uh, it was, and then Jerry Patterson had discovered years, decades, wars later, he's still in office. <laughs> he's on the community college district in District 2. He's still there. So we didn't get that wooden stake driven in properly. Sometimes you got to beat him again and again and again. I'm sorry, that's gallows humor. Okay. But the point is, it's run by the left. We had to sue them because they didn't like free speech at Orange Coast College. I had a lot of fun with that. We had a couple of kids stand up and say, yeah, they voted for Trump. And the, and the teacher who teaches sex education, which was for strangely, was really popular among 18-year-old boys. I didn't understand that. <laughs> and she said, if you voted for Trump, stand up right now. We want to know who you are because you're the enemy. That was all videotaped a million views later on Facebook. They tried to kick the kids out of school. We got into action. The Lincoln Club and I threatened to sue the school. It was great. The president resigned in disgrace. It was wonderful. <laughs> but the board is still run by the left. I need candidates to Newport Beach and Huntington Beach. Come on, Huntington Beach. You've already changed history once. You can do it on the school board. You've got so many good people here. Our job isn't done in Huntington Beach. And then there's Rancho Santiago. That's basically Santa Ana and other places. But then we got a miracle there. Daisy Tong, who used to work for Michelle, uh, and as a good activist, she got elected to the school board the old-fashioned way. You know how she got elected? This is a Santa Barbara surprise. She didn't uh, really announce that she was running. There was an incumbent that uh, we knew that wasn't going to be running for re-election. And so then you get that extra week. And uh, Daisy had filed for it. Nobody else did. And bingo, she was elected. It was a miracle. Got six positions like that in Santa Barbara. So if you're paying attention, you can get elected. And you know how Daisy did? You know how many votes she got? She wasn't even on the ballot because she was a designated winner. That costs no money at all. She's there for four years. So there's good advances that could be made. Still run by the left, but not as bad as. And then there's South Orange County College District. I have no idea what the hell's going on. Somebody brief me afterwards. Maybe it's OK. I don't know everything, it turns out. I have to talk to Fred. He knows everything. And then there's a North Orange County Community College District. Not so good. That I know. That's, that's Michelle's area. We need some wholesale reforms. We need some freedom fighters running for that. And, uh, and, and we'll get it done. But that's our neighborhood. That's where we are today. Fine. And that, those are the colleges here. And boy, there's some really bad professors. Now, I'm concluding with this. There are those who like to argue. I'll, I'll never forget. I won't mention that it's a certain organized a Republican club that showed up at an event. I got 200 precinct workers, real, real busy. We can launch an army. And he talked a lot. He was angry. And he was throwing shoes across the room. And he really had opinions. And we called him up. Hey, we're having a precinct drive uh, next week. Oh, well, I'm, 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 I'm uh, out of town on vacation. Well, what about your 200 friends? Well, you know, I'll send him an email. We called him to do anything. Would you show up? Would you buy gasoline? Would, would you feed the poor? Uh, you, you know, would you make phone calls? But boy, he was angry and he had opinions. I'm done with those people. I'm totally done with big talkers and non-doers. <laughs> My hero are the people that knock on the doors, that show up, uh, and folks that really get things done. And that's what we have. So here's my message. If you're not going to run Steve Shelton, oh, Steve, you run for it. You're, you're already done. So your excuse. He, he ran for something. If you're not going to, everybody in the front five rows of our office holders, it's amazing. I love it. If you're not going to run, then you have to recruit. 
That's all there's to it. Amy Pham West, she's elected on the city council. She cheated, she knocked on doors, and that's how she got elected. Yeah, you can do that. It's, it's still America, you still can knock on doors. But she's gonna help recruit school board members. That's exactly what we need. Scott Bosman endorsing local candidates and helping local candidates for years. He was a big part of getting Tony Strickland elected in Huntington Beach. Thank you, Scotty, for that. That's a big deal. And by the way, he looks awfully relaxed, but he's going to be our next new congressman in Orange County. <laughs> Notwithstanding all the crazy stuff that's going on. So yeah, get off your computer. You know, if you live in a school district, go to school, go to their school board meetings, and then Fred will teach you how to win. He's got classes for that. In fact, uh, it's not working. Yes. Oh, I love that. Here, here's our friends at the CTA. They're smart. They, 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 uh, you know, they have, they have, uh, they, they get, they, cut, they dominate the early mail, mail in ballots. We're going to bank the vote ourselves, the Republican Party and Donald Trump, and the whole gang has figured that out. We're going to dominate early voting like we used to, and uh, we're going to reclaim that. If you want to vote on election day, that's okay. That's that's still American. You're costing me two dollars and fifty cents a week. <laughs> I mean that literally. Think about that. Jana knows this. 50, I got to pay 250 to call up John Pete. John, uh, you haven't voted yet, have you, John? No, no, I'm, 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 I'm studying the issues. And then I send him mail, I send him phone calls, I finally send somebody knock on his door, and then I have to wait till election day. He's cost me about 20 bucks to, to make sure that he shows up. If John had voted early like a good patriot, I'd save $20 for the really lazy voter where we would knock and drag him. So the ground game's important. We know about the money. This is the newsletter. Please uh, subscribe to it. Sean Steele of SeanSteele.com. We have a nice piece on Billy Asali, who's a great patriot, a great fighter, and he's the one that's really lighting fires all over California. He's a great assemblyman. Uh, we've got really good information on this because the school movement, parent revolt is so big, I don't even have a good handle on it myself. There are so many organizations and break-off groups, and, and it's quite decentralized, and I like it that way. I do, we don't need to control it. We just need to know where they are and network among ourselves. It's everywhere. It's really, really exciting. This is the biggest social movement for schools in California's history. I would argue it's got to be the center point of our political organization. We get school board candidates running, it's gonna help the rest of the ticket, and we know that. That's why Cyprus is in such good hands. Bonnie and Bonnie's done such a good job, and John, and that, that helps us a lot. So, yeah, we got candidate schools. If you're serious about running, go to, go to school. We, we have it with the uh, Leadership Institute, the California Party, uh, Fred Incorporated, the Orange County Party. Uh, it's, it's all over the place. And then there's candidate quality. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how I, that, that slide slipped in there. But it does make a big difference if you're a good candidate. And everybody here is a good candidate. And that's something I want, you know, well, let's find those good candidates. Let's get, that's how we build our bench. That's how we keep our troops vital and interested and young. That's how we build our base. So let's find these candidates. Let's, let's get them out there. Let's get them moving. So the new ground game, Michelle's team in 2022 got 193,000 doors knocked. This never happened in the history of mankind, never happened in California. It broke, broke all kinds of records. People were visited by these nice kids, going door to door, all volunteers, constant coffees. You know, we called the Peets, we called Crandall's, we called all the elected officials when Michelle was thinking about running in the 45th, and we, Michelle said, it wasn't me, she called. She said, look, I'm thinking of running for Congress, can, can, can you help me learn a bit more about this district? And, you know, we have we had the most amazing group of, of elected officials, of a variety of languages, a variety of backgrounds, and all Republican, it's right here in Orange County. It's right here, but majority of our people are Republicans in Orange County. Let's engage them in all these campaigns. Then, uh, then we out hustle them. We just outwork them, and we're going to continue doing that. So we get high school students. That's the secret to the universe. <laughs> College students, not so good. You got to pay them, and they want to drink beer after three houses. 
<laughs> Older folks, painting over your, if you're over 30, they might do a block, you know, and then call it a day, and, you know, take a nap and a siesta. Uh, but high school students, we give them what's called a Michelle Steele internship. What does that mean? Well, we tell them it's an internship, and they can use it for, for college, for, for, for getting a job. They get a nice certificate from us, and we keep them busy. And here's the secret. I'm going to tell you to you in one sentence here. Andrew D. Giovanni, our, our manager in our campaign in 2020, is standing right back there, a great American. And so <laughs> high school students don't have cars. That's important. We pick them up. And they can't leave. <laughs> and we don't feed them, we don't feed them junk from Costco, we give them in and out burger. Yeah. Yeah. And we have good managers. And then the beautiful folks that don't like walking on doors, and I don't blame them, it's a lot of work. I, you know, I get my 10,000 steps and maybe 15,000 if I'm lucky. I get to go out. But then we'll have our, our more mature volunteers come in and they did 640,000 single dial telephone calls talking to human beings in our district. It was fantastic. You show up everywhere, you register voters 24 hours a day, and then we're really spending a lot of time in new homeowners that are moving into our Republican areas. And we welcome them with a welcome wagon. So that's something that is 24 hours, seven days a week, forever. So that's our team. Some of them you know. That's a team. You see Eric there? And <clears throat> These are the ones who work for Michelle full time, seven days a week. Yeah, we gave them a week off about a year before the election. And that was it. They were ours seven days a week. All of them have done well. All of them have, uh, have jobs. They're just great Americans. And uh, these are, these are the, the, the kids that we recruit. That's uh, just a, a few weeks ago. Every Saturday, we're, we're walking three days a week. That's really what it takes. If you're running for something and you're not walking, you're not winning. That, that's, that's, that includes every office. We're recruiting school board candidates. We're recruiting city council candidates. We invite them to walk with us, and we'll pass out their literature as well for them. And here's something that I discovered, my last slide. So that's the 4,700 good Americans that put Michelle's yard sign in her front yard, not on some random street corner, not in the middle of PCH. It's a waste of time. It's embarrassing. Don't do that. But these are people that are publicly committing themselves. I wanted to get 5,000. You know what our school board candidates did? Smartly, they went to the houses because every other street had two or three of these saying, hey, Michelle endorsed me. Can I put my sign up on your, on your property? Uh, with Amy Pham West, I actually did it the opposite. I saw where her signs were up, and I asked if Michelle could have her sign there. So you got to work with each other. You can tell they're the patriots here. So, folks, we're on a winning curve. It's easier races. You don't have to raise $20 million to get elected. You raise a few thousand dollars. You do a lot of foot leather. You get your friends involved. You can win these races, and you got, you're going to get data from... Fred's going to give you one important thing. Once you get the endorsement, you got to get the endorsement from the Orange County Party. Once you get the endorsement, you're going to find out all the high propensity Republicans in the school board districts. That's who you target. Because most people don't vote for school board. They ignore it. Most people don't vote for judges. They ignore it. Because they don't know who these guys are. We tell the hardcore five out of five Republicans who the good guy is, and that's maybe 20, 30 percent of the total population. You will always get elected to these school districts in very Democrat areas. Thank you very much. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.